Hello and welcome to this section of the Algebra Tutor. Uh, in this section we're going to talk about zero and negative exponents. So in the previous section we did a lot of work with exponents. How to simplify uh, expressions that have exponents in them on the top and the bottom of a fraction or if they're multiplied or any number of things. We talked about how to handle that. Now we're going to expand and talk a little bit more about what happens if you have a negative exponent, which we briefly, briefly talked about. We're going to talk a lot more about it now. And also, what if you have an exponent that's just zero? So it's kind of like first when you do exponents, you talk about regular exponents like one, two, and three, and so on. And then you talk about zero and negative exponents because there's a couple of other things to think about. But none of it's hard. Let me write down the important stuff and we'll work a lot of problems to give you confidence. So the first thing I'm going to do is put on the board um, something very important. If you have anything, in this case I'm going to represent it by x, but anything raised to the power of 0, you're always going to get 1, right? Always. If you have 3 raised to the power of 0, it's 1. If you have 19 raised to the power of 0, it's 1. If you have negative 39, if you have pi raised to the power of 0, if you have anything raised to the power of 0, it's 1. That's just a definition from, from a mathematical definition. You know, a lot of times in math, people who developed algebra, they had to make certain assumptions and define certain things in order for the rest of it to make sense and to build on that, those initial assumptions. The same thing is going on here. It may not make a lot of sense that you raise something to a zero power and get one, but it's just a definition. So you have to always you know, keep that true. A lot of students will say this is equal to zero. I know it might seem like it's equal to zero, but you always have to write those things equal to one. All right, the second thing I'm gonna write down, I'm gonna leave these on the board, is that if you have any kind of variable or whatever and it's raised to a negative exponent, so this exponent, it doesn't matter what it is, I'm just gonna call it negative x. It's the same thing as saying one over y raised to the positive x. This is so very important. A lot of students will look at negative exponents and get you know, weirded out by them. How can you have a negative exponent? Because when we talk about exponents, we talk about it being, you know, things being multiplied together. How do you do that negative times? Well, what's really going on is if you have a negative exponent, it's the same as one divided by the, the same thing you have here, but to a positive exponent. So a negative exponent basically just means you move it down below the fraction bar, below, you know, if, if, there's, a, if there's nothing there, then you just move it below a 1. If it's involved in a larger fraction, you just move it downstairs to the bottom of the fraction, and you make the exponent positive when you do that. So these two things are so important that I'm going to actually leave them on the board for a few minutes while we do a couple of our initial problems. All right, so let's start small. Let's say we have 2 to the power of 5 multiplied by 2 to the power of negative 2. Again, a lot of students look at that and say, well, what does 2 to the negative 2 mean? How can, that, how can that work? Well, we talked a little bit about the fact that this is really 1 over 2 to the power of positive 2. And just to give you an example, 2 to the negative 2, you just move it downstairs below the fraction and make it positive. That's what that's equal to. But for the purpose of trying to simplify an expression, everything is the same as what we've already learned. You don't have any new rules. Here we have 2 is the same. So we can add these exponents. So what we'll have is 2, 5 plus a negative 2, or 5 minus 2 is 3. And this is the answer, right? That is the answer. You just add them together just the way you always do, using your, your knowledge of adding negative and positive numbers. Now there's another way to do it. Um, just like I, I tell you, there's always more than one way to do a problem. And that is to kind of take advantage of what we just talked about here. This is also equal to 2 to the power of 5 times this can be written as 1 over 2 